Welcome to this week's webisode of The Better Half. I'm Kendra D. St. Aubin. This is Katie Hartley, and we're going to take a look back at what's been going on this week. Thanks, Kendra. Well, prayers really do come true. The university presidents approving a four-team playoff system for college football. I'm excited. Sounds like a lot of other people are excited, but Kendra, what are your thoughts on this? I think I'm excited about it as well. The initial reaction was finally, but then I was also like, what took so long? And are we going to be complaining about this again in 2015, meaning January, right after the first national championship game is supposedly decided, decided by a playoff? My thought is, it's only a 14 playoff. I think it needs to be bigger than that. And the second thing is, people are still deciding it. They're still going to have a committee. So it's, it's, you can't compare it to the NCAA mas men's basketball because that's 64 teams. So when you have a committee deciding 64, it's a little different. Four teams, the two semifinal games, I think we're going to be complaining again in 2015. And that's my two biggest problems. I think it's great that they're finally making a change, that we're finally seeing a playoff system. But at this point, I don't think they had a choice. Mm -hmm. I think they had to kill the BCS, be done with that shenanigans, and find a playoff system, which they've done. However, I don't like the selection committee. Who, who the hell is going to be on this committee? How are they going to decide who's going to be on this committee? I think that that's going to be number one disaster, and number two disaster is going to be the bubble teams. What are we going to do when we can't decide between a fourth and a fifth team? Yep, I, to total, make the I, I totally agree with you. I think, I, I think it's a step in the right direction, but more work to be done, and we're going to be revisiting this in 2015. Yes, well, better half in 2014. <laughs> we'll see you talking about that. Uh, moving on to some NBA stuff, former Suns player Amari Stoudemire fined 50 grand for using a gay slur in a tweet. He actually sent it as a direct message to a Knicks fan and then that fan then took a screenshot of it, posted it on Twitter so everybody did see it. Do you think 50 grand is too harsh for something like this? I don't think 50 grand is too harsh for something like this because it's basically a drop in the bucket to these guys. But I have to kind of chuckle because I guarantee you Mari Sotomayor was like, I'm outsmarting the system. I'm going to direct <laughs> message this guy. I'll go to the length to follow him just so I can send him a direct message and then I won't get in trouble by the league rather being put out there on Twitter for the masses to see. And either way, it backfired and got thrown back in his face. 50 grand, not too much. These guys just need to be smarter. Don't react to fans. They're just trying to get your goat. Right. And you can't, I mean, in my opinion, you can't put a price on ignorance. <laughs> you just can't do it. However, this is about as close as it comes. I, I think 50 grand is fair. I don't think that he's as bad as a guy like Meta World Peace, oh, who just does it on purpose with no, he just has no qualms about whatever he does or says and how it might affect anybody else. Amari came out and said, I'm sorry, there's no excuse for it. He took full responsibility. He wants to squash it too. So I'm okay with it. I think he, he knew he, he really messed up there. He did mess up. I mean, I'm sure part of it is a PR stunt, but at least he came out and apologized, which Meta does not do. Right. Another NBA story. Steve Nash rumors. Can't get away from them ever. However, a couple of comments uh, that sort of sparked my interest this week. The first one was, it would be hard to put on a Lakers jersey. And the second one is that money will be a very important factor, of course, Nash being a unrestricted free agent. Well, and I think the whole money comment was sort of related to respect. You know, the amount of respect you have in this league is connected to the money, and, you know, what if you sign for less and then they just get rid of you six months later? I, I think so. I'm not, I don't think Nash was like, I'm poor, I need money to survive, how do I get through week to week, day to day, like he's living paycheck to paycheck. But I don't like the money comment in the sense that these guys have it figured out. And the other thing is the Laker comment, I love that. I mean, you never see that anymore. You never see guys saying that they refuse to go and play for their rival. So I love the old, old school comment by Steve Nash. But at the same time, I think the money thing is just is kind of an ego thing at this point. Well, let's be clear. He didn't say he wouldn't put on a Lakers jersey. That's he true. Just said it would It'd be, be hard. hard. So <laughs> I don't think he's saying yeah, I would never play He's covering play for his bases Rangers. there, that's for sure. Um, but I, you know what, I'm actually okay with both of these comments. I'm not disappointed at all in what Steve Nash said. I think we see the emotional side, the human side of Steve Nash by saying it will be hard to put on a Lakers jersey. And as far as the money goes, he's a product. Mm -hmm. And he's selling it's a, business. a product. Mm -hmm. And I think he's just being a smart business guy um, as far as he wants to get paid what he's worth. And I don't think that that's such a bad thing, especially when winning a championship isn't that important to him he said that it wouldn't define his career mm -hmm. so I'm I'm totally okay with it yeah I mean I don't think it's the end of the world but we'll see how we I mean he's also old 
Let's not forget yeah. that, so we'll see how much money 38, you get. Yeah, you're exactly. a real geezer there, <laughs> Steve Nash. Uh, Kendra, let's wrap with kind of a fun story here. Thumbs up, thumbs down, Anthony Davis of Kentucky <laughs> uh, trademarking his unibrow. And also, I think he's filed paperwork uh, to have exclusive rights oh, to the goodness. phrase, fear the brow and raise the brow. First of all, two I didn't thumbs even know, down. Two thumbs down. I didn't even know it was possible to grow facial hair like that. <laughs> I've seen some bad unibrows, but that is like legitimately a solid brow across the entire width of his forehead. Terrible. Shave it. Get rid of it. You'll get a lot of chicks from your contract, but you'll get more if you get rid of that stupid brow. I guarantee if he gets to say, girlfriend, she's shaving that thing in the middle of the night. No way. I love it. Keep it, Anthony. Keep it. Two <laughs> thumbs up from me. I'm going to stop plucking oh, right now gosh. just so I People can have them. People are going to quit watching then. Brow. Don't do that. Don't go there. I love it. I think it's fun. Well, good for you. I hope you make some <laughs> great money off of that. Kendra, we are out of time. She's Kendra D. St. Aubin. You can follow her on Twitter at Kendra620. You can follow me at FunKD620, and we'll see you next week for another webisode of The Better Half. Not with a unibrow. No. <laughs>